Welcome to November. This month, I want to focus with you on building rapport, keeping it and not killing it. We have family, friends, maybe we're meeting some new friends, and uh, sometimes we get triggered. Sometimes we just go, oh my God, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to be with this person. So I have a few tricks up my sleeve and I want to share with you a few of those tricks. Namely, try and be the best Mary you can. When you get out of your own triggers and kind of become what we call a mirror and you start to look at how the other person is acting, what they're saying, what they're doing, how they're saying it, what we're trying to do is basically get on their map, quote, quote, their map. Maybe they use specific words that, or phrases that you don't really use, but when you say it back to them, often they'll go, yeah, that's right. So if they say, I'm just having a terrible day, you could say, oh, I'm so sorry you're having a terrible day. And you try and mirror that image back to them. You don't say, oh, I'm sorry your day sucks because you're using, you're starting to use different words. If you say words back to them in phrases, non-judgmentally and kind of open like a book, a mirror, then what will happen is you're starting to build rapport. And what rapport is really is you creating an experience for that person where they're feeling acknowledged, loved, and safe. And they also subconsciously are saying, wow, this person is like me. They are not a threat. They are okay. Maybe I can open myself up and have a more of a conversation. When we are feeling under threat, we will close up or we'll kind of be combative or we'll fight. Uh, well, it's the fight or flight mode. But if you take all those things away, then what are they left to do? But they're going to feel open, more calm. They'll start to engage. They'll smile more. They'll maybe lean in more and so forth and so on. I'm sure when you are having a great conversation with someone, imagine or remember what was happening. You were maybe leaning in, smiling, laughing more, and the conversation kept going. So if you can imagine, having a good conversation is like having a really good round of tennis. It's not just to win for yourself and you're gonna crush the opponent. There's, there are no opponents here. You want to be able to have a great conversation and keep that ball in the air. They are saying something very short. Hey, how are you doing? You go, great, I'm doing well. You may not want to launch into a five minute dissertation, but it go, okay, they're serving it to me this way. I'm going to return it back kind of similar. And then you kind of bounce back and forth. It might seem kind of obvious, but I'll tell you, I've had some major faux pas in the past where I just had no idea that I was really killing rapport and it kind of stopped the conversation. So if someone says, oh, have you read this book? You don't say, no, I haven't because now the conversation can't go anywhere, right? You're kind of capturing the ball and then you're just dropping it. Can't play like that. So what are you going to do? You say, no, I haven't read that book, but tell me more about it or where could I get it? You might not care about getting the book, but Building rapport and having a conversation is nothing about that. It's not necessarily about getting into the subjects. It's about finding connection. It's about finding similarities, commonalities. If a person's really into flying planes, then maybe you can talk about flying planes and maybe you start grabbing into traveling and so forth and so on. Keep within those subjects and slowly bounce back and forth and use those mirroring techniques that I think are up above in the newsletter to help keep people engaged and feel acknowledged. If you are judgmental, if you are going, wow, I can't believe you talked about that and so forth and so on. Well, that kind of kills a person's dream. It kind of kills their rapport. It kind of kills them really wanting to open up to you. So play back and forth engage maybe if they're kind of stepping back a little bit and have their arms crossed like this after maybe 30 seconds try crossing your arms a little bit lean against a door jam if you're you know or if you have a drink if they're really handsy and not like to move a lot then maybe start to do that a little bit while you're talking 
or if they're bobbing their heads around a lot, go just start to do that a little bit. It's all those subtle cues of how you're listening, how you're using your body language, and how you're using the words and phrases back to them to really make it happen. And then you're playing tennis, you're building that rapport, going back and forth. So if there's someone you don't really like, but you have to have a conversation, just mirror them. Use their words. If they're starting a subject, then great, kind of add on to that subject. Build that rapport. Use the language. Use the body language to keep it going. If they are just not wanting to play and you have tried your best, then you go, wow, you know what? It was so great to talk to you. Um, I'm going to go get a beverage. Can I bring you anything? So forth and so on. Just keep it light. Keep it going. All of that. You can use this building rapport with interviews, at the bar, with family, with friends. If they are having a tough time, try and make their life a little better. Try and engage with them. And over time, it might be this conversation, it might be in 10 conversations, maybe in five years. Try and just plant those seeds to build confidence, engagement with that person and see how that works for you. Happy holidays, I hope you stay out of your own triggers, balance yourself, keep centered, and be a really good mirror so you can acknowledge and bring the other people in. I will bet that you'll be surprised at how great communication will be when you, the, when you use these techniques. Have a great month. I'll see you in December.